Okay, let's get started. Uh, hello everyone. So then we'll talk about our work. So this one was published in Mobile Hub this year in July. Um, I know this is a really long title, but you really need, don't need to read the full title. All we need to carry is the second word of the uncertainty. So through my talk, you're gonna see what is uncertainty and why we have uncertainty and how should we deal with that. So I'm the presenter, Charles Andy, and this one is done with my colleague Yan Chongdang Huang. I'm a professor of work and law. We are from Wuxi Tegan. One of is from the U.S. Army Research Lab. Alright, let's get started. Since our work in the sky, I think everybody has heard about country radio. It's been a word for something like 20 years. So what is country radio that there is two set of users. One is prime user, one is second users. And they share the whole spectrum, change it this way. This figure shows a good idea of how country works, although it's like distributed, but there's can be some kind of base station, access point, taxator is today. So you can see here that two sides of channels, one is licensed prime user channels, that has the blue line, oh sorry, the black line, and the other is the like the second channels, that means the blue dotted line. So what's that difference? Like the primary channels, they are like licensed, they pay for the spectrum, so they just transmit as they want. However, for the secondary second user channels, they should send in the prime user and then transmit. But you don't pay for that, you just like free ride and you have to make your uh, prime users happy, then you can transmit. Of course, if they transmit in the same spectrum simultaneously, there will be some difference. So why do we need country radio? That's a very that's a very people are gonna have, okay proposal is what is this what are these advantages? So I'm pretty sure some of you have heard about this figure and it's very crowded. This is the spectrum allocation governed by FCC. And you can see we have allocated different fractions of the spectrum to different applications. And you can see our, you don't see that, but our standard frequency band is really limit, limited. So although this frequency are allocated to different applications, the utility is actually very low, about 15% to 65% based on your geolocation applications. So then people ask, why, sh why are we only allow one picture on one spectrum? which can share, right? We can add two sets of users on the same spectrum to increase spectral efficiency. And on Good question. There has been a lot of sensor algorithm that if like spectral based, power based, or some kind of, uh, some kind of different based, otherwise you can know whether the project is transmitting, whether the spectrum is idle, or then Oh, it depends on your settings. If you are talking about a huge cell, I will just be like 100 or like 10 to 200. And if you are talking about very small cell, like it's less than 10, it's still kind of count as 100. Okay. So for current radio, of course, you can see if the second user is a new network, like the primary is a current deployment, you want to deploy some new infra infrastructures, then you can consider it's a second network. That's why it's ideal to deploy new networks. These are the two main benefits of country radio. Of course, there are too many. I will not talk about that in details. And you can see the search this on Google, you have a lot. All right, so there are actually three schemes regarding country radios called interleaving, underlay, and overlay. But basically, how these two sets of users share the spectrum. So let's use the green line as primary signal and use the purple line as secondary signal. In interleaving, that means there are some kind of special holes when the second user is idle. Right, the spectrum is not occupied, and when the second user knows, it will go to transmit. So you see, there's no interference on the spectrum device. So for underlay, uh, they can share the spectrum, but as long as your second signal is below a threshold. So at the primary side, let's look at some, look at some noise, as long as there are SNRs over. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Put this on the same spectrum at the same time. Right. For overlay, it's more complicated, actually. So when the second use, sec primary signal is low, and then the second can be very high, so you can use some kind of inter uh, successive interference cancellation, you can decode your primary, primary signals. So I think the most interesting part is the second one, called underlay. This has been increasing attention here. So let's talk about that in our talk today. Uh, so let's review, review about how this works. We have the interference threshold, and you want to ensure that the second signal must be limited. By the as we see by the primary side. 
and this is just an example of two, two, user, two, two set of users, two trusted pairs, one primary, one secondary. Okay? Find the size application. So the benefits of this kind of analytics is that, of course, you have two sets of users now that improves special efficiency. Right? And also, you have the interference threshold. That means a little bit decreasing by S and R, but it's, the point will be happy if your threshold is, uh, your is lower than threshold. So that means that you don't need to change anything on the hardware side. No hardware changing, no software changing, it's just as you do endure. So this is very ideal for incremental deployment because every vendor they want to make their defenses stay the same and you add a new stuff. You don't want to change the whole thing. So because we have interference, that's a really big issue here. So we have two kind of difference actually. From the primary side to the secondary side. Uh, that's like the price you have to pay if you don't want if you want to use the primary for a while. So this kind of interference is captured in the second user chain of training. Okay. And it's like the second user would you will still do channel training, it will know that the channel condition is now. As the other direction, from second user to the prime user, you have to maintain the threshold. As I told multiple times about the threshold things. And to do that, you have to control your transmission power. Right? You need to lower your power if it's over the threshold, otherwise you can increase the power as you go. Yes, there is like controller among the second users, and they will know their transmission power, but they will not notify the primary user. Right? So now this is like a mathematical model, and you want to ask, is there any reality applications? Is it deployed now? I suppose it will be in, in 4G, but it definitely will be using 5G. Right? As well, you people have heard about someone else, more sales stuff. So let's talk, let's take that like example. To consider a two-tier cellular network. One is primary and the other is Mark II. The primary has Mark and cell, the pickles are that secondaries. So what is a Mark and cell is like you're not a cell phone user. So here is a measurement I'm in my lab in focus the hall, and I am looking at which cell towers I'm connecting. Well its original connection here, somewhere near downtown, I think. It's about four hundred meters or like one quarter miles away. And then some at some time it changes to here it's in the drill field actually. So I'm thinking there's two, there is an access point in the drill field. And, and I went there I found nothing. It's like a, maybe they have some disguise on that. But if you want to find the cell tower in drill field that's uh, like kind of hide and seek so. so this tells you that for now your cell phones, the distance between your cell phone to our cell tower like tens of uh, hundreds of meters. And in the future maybe there will be some small cells in your building. There are some kind of access point that serves a lot of large of users in the, in the room. So that's the world we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you are talking about marking micro cell, that could be a couple of miles away. When I was in my home, I was actually collecting somebody in the IT one. That's like four miles away actually. Yes. But you can download software to see where most large cell towers are connected. It's very, it's very, it's very interesting because for our, our voice to to know what we are, who we are talking to. But usually, I think maybe one click or one mile should be a reasonable point. So you may notice that there's different colors for my pixel cells, and what's that? Let's talk about special. So in this case, we consider some people call that fractional protein regions. That means I have a spectrum, I like a micro cell, but for each pickle cell, I'm going to use a fraction of that. I don't use the whole. And for neighboring cells, neighboring pickle cells, they use different fraction of, of the spectrum, so that there will be no uh, internal pickle cell interference for neighboring pickle cells. And for certain, everyone knows about FDMA, what is that? I will not talk about that. So FDMA you cut the time into pieces, you cut frequency into pieces, you have to different users. Okay. So when we that's why for our problem we only need to focus on one pixel cell because they two are they are all independent, we use different spectrum, right? spectrum. So consider here we have one access point, we have three second users, and we have two primary nearby. That's why why this there's only two because other 
just be limited numbers since the footprint of market is so huge. Like there's an alternative around our room with their limited numbers. But there will still be inference on each second to the parameter. Right? And each parameter have a different threshold need to protect the parameters. Okay, so the problem we want to try to solve is we want to maximize the spatial efficiency of the second universe. In this work, we don't consider the primary set. As long as the different threshold is meet, they are happy. We don't take care of that. So the object we use is weighted sum weight. So weight we use to address for one, one reason that we want to address fairness and truth. Another reason that there is a popular scatter if you know that's called popular proportional fair scatter. It's actually a weighted sum rate which time to do with the weights are updated at each PDR. So several decision variables, we need to allocate the spectrum to the second users and then we decide the trusting powers are very clear. And some significant constraints is that we have the allocations, RB allocation in FDMA of one RB can be allocated to one and only. And we need to calculate data rates based on the channel according to the log two stuff. Everybody heard that. And the power control, there are actually two sets of power control we need to consider. One is internal because your cell phone cannot transmit infinite power. There's a device limit for each cell, oh, sorry, for each second user. And for external, you need to protect the prime user cell. So you need to maintain the alternate threshold for each prime user. So now, here is the first time that in we show about uncertainty, this word appears. So we call that uncertain channel gains for the second prime users. So you, you, want, you may ask, what is this uncertainty? Right, let's take a look, detailed look at that. So consider there are, let n be the number of second users and n be the second number of RBs. Okay. In traditional way, if you know everything, you know every channel gain and you know the threshold, you will have something like that. Which means the sum, your summation, the transition power times the channel gain, and you sum it up across RBs, across users, this should be less than any different threshold. If you look at the parameter literature, they have some term called interference temperature, which is exactly the same thing. So that is based on assumption that you know how this G, the channel gain, is obtained. You know everything. But in reality, actually, how do they manage this analytically? Because it's not that simple. So how do they, whenever the parameter is transmitted, the second will overhear that signal based on some rainbows or pilots, some known signals. Then you're going to ask me the channel uh, based on channel velocity. That's not an actual channel with a standard pilot. We have feedback. Remember, there is no proportion between the parameter and the second to side. So this is the only way that you can measure the channel from the primary side to second to use. If we want to use instantaneous channel gains, that's quickly out, it's changing really fast. In 4G, that could be like milliseconds level, but in fact, it can be still, it can be lower. And also, if the plan is silent, you can measure the channel at that time. So that's why instantaneous channel gain is not available at every TTI, but you still have to maintain the threshold at every TTI. So that's why we call this uncertain channel gains. You don't know the channel gains still make you still have to do the power control. Possibly. Uh, what kind of statistic? Uh, I like six lucas. Yeah. So what I'm saying that is instantaneous channel gains is not there. Okay. So your point can be called like this way. How do we address this uncertainty? That's where three three approaches. One is like you said, we can assume that the solutions based on like I'm going to feeling really feeling Russian, you have really feeling you want. So the advantage is that it's actually actually captured that certainty. You know descriptions, still basically you know everything. And you can use some kind of stochastic gradient to base method to optimize that problem. But the downside is that what is that different is inaccurate. Let's you let's say you assume a really but actually the Russian. So there could be some misleading results. And also, in reality, your channel gain does not match your assumption perfectly. There will be some kind of difference. And another downside is that your problem could be hard to solve, depending on the probability density functions. Like, really, it could be easy to solve, I guess. But what if you have some kind of ugly experience? That's not, it's, not, it's just a trouble. Another way is that people have, people have been proposed that somebody called that worst case assumption, or some people call that robust assumption. Based on kind of parameters. Let's say I know the channel gains certain, but I know the maximum channel gains. This is the worst case. I'm going to focus on the worst case as we enforce them and uh, the threshold. This will give you the simplest mathematical formulation, let's say. Maybe you have a linear problem. 
but and it uh, guarantees there will be no violation of threshold. But the worst case doesn't violation, there will be no violation in any cases. But it's very conservative in performance side. Now the worst case it rarely appears. And you only focus on that, so you are wasting a lot of opportunities. And it could be sensitive to the boundaries. You are focusing on as major errors that are gonna lower your performance. So what we propose today here is called transcript program. This is actually relatively new in our research community. And compared with intensive programming, it does not need these versions. Uh, it's based on statistics and properties. Statistics mean like you know, the mean, the covariance, some kind of high order statistics. Property means what the boundaries, or I know the uh, distribution is symmetric, or I know the position in the model, and this kind of uh, property of the distribution. And I can use some kind of combination of these two. It's very flexible. Whenever you have a combination, you have one, so you can use transcendent program. And to solve the conservative worst cases, you still have. Historical data, yes. Okay. And it can be updated on it. Uh, you, you can have the mean based on some you know, we know average. Yeah, that's one way. You can mod second histogram to approximate the distributions. But uh, I think that we may require a lot of data to calculate. Yes. So, um, so we have a certain problem. You can you can you can try this. You have problem. You can try this. But my point is that it will take a lot of data to accurately capture the distributions. Okay. So we also allow it you know, occasional validation of the threshold. Right? So why you know, this is a, suppose this is your interference. Sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher. But as long as you are you are above the interference happens, that's what you that's, that's acceptable for the prime users. So the reason that, first of all, we every consistent use error crash code, error code, 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 or code. They can retrieve your transmitted code, submitted bits, to some extent. I'm not saying always, but it will, it will make you feel better. It will, perhaps it will, it will recover the transmitted bits. And also for our standard today, actually lots of are based on video rich applications, like video, pictures, or audios. And our human perspective Perception system is not sensitive to that. Right? So you, you watch YouTube, sometimes they can, the resolution drops a, drops a little, you will not notice that. And also, for those kind of applications, there will be some buffering. And as long as you are watching the movies fluently, you don't notice the, how it transmits. Uh, so, based on these reasons, that the accurate validation of different threshold is acceptable. So, let's see how this chance can reward works. Um, as the advantage that there's no distribution needed and it's flexible and it allows validations. The downside is of course little more probability and you can't solve that directly. But you don't have distribution, you can't get rid of probabilities as easy as the stochastic program. So how do we solve that? We have a chance for programming that has a that has probability that does not have distribution, then you do a formulation. You remove that probability. So suppose this is our original problem space. And you find a subset of that inside it, a kind of a convex formulation, if you want, if you can, and that has no probability formulation. And then you solve this traditional convex form, convex problem, as distributive problems. So there are obviously will be some kind of resting errors with this kind of formulations. But what I show that in some cases you can do exact formulation. That means your original problem space is exactly the same as your reformulated problem space. And after that, all you have is the determinacy of an follow you can do whatever you want. There's no problem in any one. Okay, so this is the general methodology of chance human programming. And let's let's take a, this uh, application example. Remember this is the previous round, so when you have no uncertainties, you know all the channel gains you want to control the transmission powers. So to do this with uh, chance human programming, you're going to act probably here, you have a guarantee one minus epsilon. This absolute is called risk level in CCP terminology. You may think this is very similar to like a stochastic program, stochastic program, only that this G I J, the uncertain channel gain, is known by mean and covariance far from problem. That's not there are no distributions. It could be any distribution as well. So 
how do we measure mean covariance based on the over here? You can do something of that. Keep track of the mean covariance. Like also to accurately measure the mean covariance, that you need less data points than your chicken stuff. Absolutely. And you know, if you know the probability X theory, the estimation accuracy of mean covariance decreases exponentially. Okay. So, and this one is slow changing, is easy to estimate. All right. So, then I need to do a kind of vector manipulation with write down as a met, like vector form, like this way. You don't need to get details, you just know we have a original summation form, then do that as a vector form. Okay. And we know this G has mean G bar and covariance R. And no description needed. And note that this G is actually channel gains on subchannel. This could be a correlated. That's very common in our today's system. And we need to guarantee this constraint on every distribution. You know you don't know that's our problem. So now we need to do some kind of reformulation stuff. At start, we have a lower guarantee of one minus epsilon. That's equivalent to a uh, upper guarantee. That's an epsilon. We change the sign here. This is like a validation probability. I think changes. And then in our paper, we have spent like two pages to derive this kind of reformulation stuff. I will not go into detail, but the main idea that even though we don't know the distributions, we have a closed form of this super. Look at this. Let's look at this. this thing. Right. When you know the mean and the covariance, you can draw this equation. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah. There is no distribution, you know. It's a risk level, like your validation probability. Uh, so. This G, originally, the G bar is the mean. Here, this is the covariance. You mean here? Yes. Yeah, you, you, you mean this one? Or this one? Oh, yeah, here. Here is the like zero mean. Because you, if you minus the G bar, it's actually zero mean have a, have a, have a variance in the scale. So this is I wouldn't like how we divide this thing with formulations. And uh, the key point is that when I define this scalar variable, then I follow some kind of approach, and then I form the closed form of the circle. Okay. That's like a re intermediate manipulations. Um, and then after we found that, we just have rounded it back this risk level. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't know. And actually, Gaussian is Gaussian is not the worst case. The worst case is like, uh, well, if you have a paper, you can see the worst case. What is the worst case? Okay, actually, so what does this mean that there exists some distribution that achieve the relation probability epsilon j, for other distributions it's going to be less epsilon j. But since you don't know the you have to guarantee that for every distribution. All right. So this uh, mm -hmm. This one. Yes, for every distribution. Regarding its cultural right, but even discrete distribution of our everything yes, Even for discrete. Actually the worst case is actually discrete. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um so when we found that we are bound by risk level as J and then we can derive our post the mean theorem of the, our uh, this work. Without when I have a like this, we know mean and covariance, and we have uh, this kind of constraint. I we can equate in that, write that at this at the bottom one. So now you see the uncertain channel gain, the red J is disappears, and the mean and the covariance is included in the constraint. Right. So basically, through this way, we just show that some kind of way, and we have this constraint. And there are actually two points to make. If we Name this kind of reformulation as exact conic formulation. That's the name we give it. So exact means that for some distributions, this is actually epsilon. For some distributions, you can achieve relation probably at at the epsilon. For other it's just lower than that I just told you. For Gaussian is actually it's, I tried Gaussian can be lower than that. But since you don't know, you, you can't just assume Gaussian. And the conic means that this new derived reformulation constraint is the conic constraint. It's actually convex. So, even though there's a general constant, 
best methods. All right, so this is the main results that I show you that when they have this kind of chance, you just write down the second one test immediately. And I guarantee there will be no you know, relaxations. This open space is the same. I will talk about the, the character later. Yes, yeah. Sorry? Yes, yes. And this is. Yes. Anyone is the same. So we have a few that is equal to this one, which is this one. This white thing in terms of the other. So the condition is not. The solution is included in this curve, the T curve, and you can solve the T throughout the problem. But there can be multiple values of T that can be solved. Yes, that's why you need to do a condition to show the opposite. So, yeah, all the things that this is a, this is just a mistake. Yeah. And then you have another T is what you can do. But if you have a But already the maximum, we need to make a better frequency. So we need to do this very quickly and power to get to the special level. All right. So actually, there exists a uh, state-of-the-art approach. If you read the paper basically, they all use kind of they call it Bernstein approximations. And let's do a quick comparison of that. So for our ECR, we have the 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 black one. For the previous paper, they have something like the right one. They are quite similar, I can say, except for what is included in the square root and they have the sigma of parameter. Uh, there are like uh, three advantages and one disadvantage compared with them. So in our paper, we in our ECR technique, we assume there are no assumptions for the random variables that they could be hardly they could they could even be unbounded. That's still false. But in first of all, you see previous paper. We all assume they are independent and they should be bounded. But independent does not match our problem here because the, this is a chain of gain, it could be part of it. And our ECR provides like exact formation, that means this is the case of Here is the and that is also right. And also to derive the constraint, for our case, we just need the mean correct by write down immediately. Have no additional additional thing. But for theirs, you need to solve the alternate problem like this one. Um, not you don't need to read that. You, all you have to know that if you want to solve the sig the sigma in the right side, you need to go through. And also the downside for our thing is that we are only appear uh, we can only be uh, used in linear type or something like that. But in the interchange the question side the character is linear to the certain characters. But their case can be a better than linear. Well, it will give some other forms, but you can use person as a non linear characters. But the good news is that the, our problem is linear character, so we're gonna go with our problem. And now, how to do that is you see your convergence, you just call that over and you write down and you want. And then you have a form, you download the formations. After that, we will have a mixed integer non linear problem. So our problem, you have a deterioration of terms, and you have the, you, you derive power control from ECR, and also you have linear variables to do a schedule. And that's a, and some other things, it doesn't matter, that you just need to consider. So at that time, the solution to do this, because to solve that, it will take a really long time. So because we have non-linear term and integer. So a good thing is for the third step is we need to linearize it, make it to a mixed linear program. Um, there are basically two parts to do that. One is we have a log term. So you need to do some kind of convex flow. I'm not sure I've heard about convex flow with that. We have a log term and then we can the like standard things you need to do with log terms. Of course, there will be some like some errors, but as the more lines you edit, the less error you have. 
and the red lines is going to solve everything like that. It looks scary, but actually there's only these two are the smart other things are just constant. So it's still linear transfer, linear constraint. And the larger k you have, less stress area you have. So in our simulations, we use like 21 lines for one long term, like you observe from one to the relative gap. So it's not that huge. And also because these are linear constraints, but not in case complexity that much. And then for the second row cone from it's actually a L2 knob if you look at what's inside the curve. And a, a good thing to do that, we can use stability norm to linearize the log 2 norm. Of course, there will, be, there will be some kind of like less error. So what is the RJ, the decision parameter? It's an engineering parameter. We can tune that parameter to control your less error. And uh, in our case, if you have a consider correlation, so we know correlation de decreases as your carrier spacing is, is further apart. So when you get down to get your red RJ, you can that this is not how red. You notice it dependent on diagonal matrix. Otherwise, like a band matrix. And then you can get this R based on your correlation. And then in our paper show, we can choose this RJ and this one. That will give you a uh, minimum stress error before solving the problem. Okay, now you, you don't know the problem. Anymore. You don't you don't solve the P. You just look at the command, you choose your R. So now this is two parts of exchanges, then you have finally have the fixed linear bound like this, the application, transfer powers, and the tetris. Other than, all other things is the constant. This is the mixing linear programming, you can use some off-the-shelf solvers for that, like CFX to be already. Alright, so now we have some show from the transition formulation to mixing the linear, then to the mixing linear. Then we are going to lab to solve this. We can solve our maximum our optimal value of t. Okay. So for simulations, we consider the buffer base station in its 400 to our set, that gives us 40 meters set radius. And for our papers in this kind of setting, the second is, number of seconds is very small. That's the antenna. So it could be more than 20, but for the current rate, it doesn't really need to be that much. And we have considered that one or three parameters around the tickle cell, and there are 12 RBs in the spectrum. So the Markov basin is transmitting 46 dBm, and each second user has 20 dBm limit. For the channels, six second users. Yeah. For the channel models, well, we have to have general channels based on some, some kind of models. Uh, we consider the pass off model and the fast fadings. So the fast fading, we change the that to radio fading, right here, like a radio fading, different kind of fadings. But know that even if the underlying distribution is changing, all we need is mean and correct. We don't care about the change of distribution. And the consider channel could be independent and correlated. So for benchmarks, we have considered two benchmarks minus you use worst case formulation, you use maximum value that can be a missing value of your graph. We will solve that based on kind of solvers. And we consider the state of the art approach for basic information. And uh, know that the sigma is considered an RKV. And we will solve that without any linearization. We use missing, we solve the missing value of our graph, even though it takes a really long time. All we care about is uh, formulas. And note that the principle cannot be applied to any two quality channels. These are the fundamental functions. So here are one possible channel for like this one. So this is the the star in the center, the center is between the cell. And this is a special thing like that. No, we don't need to see a part from. <laughs> anyway, actually, okay, I should have the right one. I can have special. Uh, anyway, so this one is the worst case. This is just the position. This is our system. Uh, the red one is our system. Yeah, so this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's give it a PDF for the other species. So this is the size of the system. This is the uh, Bartini and Yaku. This is the size of the one. This is the size of the one. So that's why I would show that our total system has a higher interpretation. And this part is the equation we have to And this part is 
This tells us, I mean, in reality, even if you set epsilon at 0 0.5, there could be lower. But you know, maybe at some distance you will achieve it. Like so then we did generate like three from users, same, same, same settings, same setting of second users, and we see that again. And for second three p prime users, the sentence is actually lower than the than the one with one prime user. So we need more to perfect. And uh, this is a very strange satisfaction of that. Because there are multiple users in the room going to be and that's kind of But in every the case it has our solution provides the highest special case. And then we change different distribution. So previous all we all we use is really fading, and then we change the amount of benefit in the right thing. Let's go with that. Uh, so for really good right thing, as we know, one some channel they could also be like special case of like everything. And uh, you know also when you check this is the the, this one is the second. So what you notice that the probably is all under this, uh, it's all below the root level, that means it may change. And when the end is smaller, your frequency drops. That's because when the end is smaller, you are failing these two zeros. The brain is not fine. And that's uh, ever smaller of this space. Alright. So, but. Well, what we do this test is we show that our solution guarantees the system level in every session. Although I can't test the average solution, but at least for this, I think for Euro situation, we can do that. Okay, so the last set of uh, results I can show that we have hardly channel. This has nothing to do with any previous papers. But we use different conditions to can handle correlations. Now we consider this now is one of these are one of these already part of the neighbor. Your current correct measure is like 25, like three lines. And this is a fully important that you are being part of the average area of it. A very high portion case. And uh, so the black curve on the top is the independent case. And the solid that are in the low portion case, the solid is the high portion case. So you see that when your correlation is increased, your special case drops. And also for the bottom figure is that it's very important and in your first one you can see the correlation are very important problems. That means correlation is really hurting our performance of second units. And uh, when we look at solution we are actually seeing two ways one is because of correlation stuff. The other one is because we know that we have a better from how long they are taking off. There are some kind of direct errors. When a correlation increases, there will be this measure is higher. So you may be better than me for this on correlation case. But at least when we show for correlation, I will show for you. And this is actually the first uh, work that shows correlation settings. And we show that our solution also works in this general settings. Alright. Uh, there are last some for some slides we do extend the this 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 is the work we could any multi and this will be some kind of 
So know that we have considered uh, people who sell drugs on the chain of games. For the second slide that we show is the thing with the incorrect, which is the last piece. However, on the other side, this is the from the transmission. And that's the third one. They are kind of sold on the traditional chain of things. In 4G, you are going to have a very big effect. In 5G, you are the way of the community. In 5G, you are the way of the community. That means you need to solve a filter with the instant, but you get to the second. And we, in our previous works, we did on CPU that like the second level, which are too slow to solve the problem. And what do we do if we run on GPU first? If we're talking about CPU, there are many different that the CPU has several cores, like less than 16 for most CPUs. But for GPUs, there's thousands of cores. Although each core is less capable of CPU. Okay. So then you will really define you are some kind of parallel with our GPU for the problem. And you have to come up with that. You have a large problem that you can put that to some small problems. You need to put that and solve some that problem based on a very fast process. And uh, some advantages each two did consider is like threshold allocation, memory allocation. This is standard for the GPU program. So the results we achieve back in time may be in a way that you have to be back in It's really fast. And this is a work I've done out here at your company in Hawaii, actually. So I do always come from the room. Yes. So in the room, what do you go to Hawaii? You also have to go to Hawaii. Why do you not go to Hawaii? Okay, I'm not going to ask you. Okay, I'm not going to ask you. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but I would say that this is uh, why we do want to do real time computing stuff, because we have channel gate channel Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I was talking about it. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you look at our group, you know, we have that model. To reduce the edge of this. Yeah. Alright, um, so this is like uh, the current standard, so it's this one going. And the last page I want to show is some kind of previous questions. As in this paper, we need to work with show like something in channel gains. But there's actually a lot of uncertainty in the other end. Channel gains is also one, and also computer time is part of it, another one. You have a program, and you don't know how much time you're going to cost before after you run, but before you're going to run. Uh, it could stop early, it could stop it could stop less. And the position of the device is also another one. Like the drone in the sky, the position of some assessing positions. And also, battery discharge rate means I have a cell phone, I know the current battery is like 60%. How much time do I have left? How much time when you gonna, when I have after that, it runs out? And there are some hard order imperfections, it still can come at a certain time. There will be lots of more if you want to look at our, our field, there are some uncertainty in your problem, maybe. So to address the name, today we show about the chance of community, that is not that widely used in community. So if you want to write a paper, you can go with champion forming, that will be a high of acceptance. Actually, yeah. people have used the cluster forming in the worst case of the last years. But uh, this one, I don't see a lot of people. And also, if you want uncertainty, if you want to ask, can I use the Shredinian for it? That's another way to go. Um, so what I said that for, for other people, you really change some uncertainty involved and you do a new approach, then you can write a paper and click on your work. Um, for now, I do CTT. Your CTT has several things. But the Shredinian is hard to get started. And the Shredinian depends on how you change the parameters. Maybe for some things, one of the most better, but it's hard to define how much I have to get. Or maybe you guys can try both. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes the So, uh, I have spent a lot of time to talk about the work of people sell chain uncertainty, and I talked about one new lesson tool called transfer programming, I presented with a technique to do the formulation, and called ECR. And our solution based on this one gives you the highest probability and can handle more general settings. 
and also helps uh, some clients to talk about the income issue and some kind of future future tensions that we may want to consider. What's the thing that for our community research? All right, I'm gonna stop here. Have you take any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see what? Yeah, see what? Can you Yes. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, we can talk about in detail. We can send it in Okay. Good. Okay, thank you.